I thought I would do this short video on the most challenging type of net ionic equation writing you're going to be expected to do on your next exam, Unit 5 exam, so that if you are able to master this level of question, you should be in pretty good shape. Uh, that doesn't mean that you stop studying then. There are several concepts and other things you need to know, but this, this will be the toughest, I think. So, and practicing for this level of question will also help you somewhat preparing for the final. Uh, because notice I did not give you formulas for the reactants. And this question is asking you to predict products and write a net ionic equation for this. So the first thing you need to do is write down the chemical formulas for the reactants. And any area that you are rusty on, um, take the time right now. Don't wait till the week before final or a couple days before the final. Take the time now to review. So strontium bromide, any ionic compound, is a two-step process to come up with the correct formula. You have to know the common charges for the elements. Strontium is in group 2A, so it has a charge when it's an ion of plus 2. Bromide, bromine, is one of the halogens in group 7A. It has a charge of minus 1 when it is an ion. So the correct chemical formula for strontium bromide when we crisscross charges. And the problem was nice. It gave us the state of matter for both the reactants. The AQ means it is soluble in water which means that it's when we write our total ionic equation, it's going to split up into the ions. Potassium sulfate. Sulfate is one of the polyatomics. You know that anything that ends in eight or it is a polyatomic. You need to have the polyatomics, the common ones, memorized. Um, so, uh, and I know Desire said there were flashcards for that. So crisscrossing these charges, the formula for potassium sulfate. And that's also a soluble ionic. All right, so now that you have the correct formulas for the reactants, you need to determine what the products are. So the method to go through, first of all, hopefully you can see that this is a precipitation reaction or a double replacement reaction. Um, anytime your reactants are two ionic compounds, that indicates it's likely a precipitation reaction. So now we have to figure out what the potential products could be, and then remember the requirement for a precipitation reaction. In order for there to be a reaction, at least one of the products must be insoluble in water, must be a precipitate, otherwise there'll be no reaction. So let's check it out. I think the easiest way to determine products is combine the outer ions from the two reactants and then combine the inner ions. Do not make the mistake of carrying over subscripts. Okay, Just because you have subscripts by elements on the reactant side does not mean they're going to be there on the product side. Those subscripts are totally determined by the charge on each ion and they're combining with different ions in the product. So be careful, criss cross charges to get the correct product formulas also. So we have strontium again with a plus two, combining now with sulfate, which is also minus two. Anytime you combine ions in the, with the same but opposite charge, uh, just put them together in a one-to-one -one ratio. So we don't know whether this is soluble or not, so I'm just gonna put the parentheses there to remind myself to go to the solubility table and check it out. And the other product is combining the inside ions. Make sure you put the metal, the cation first in the formula. Potassium and bromine are combining. Again, a one-to-one -one ratio. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and balance this reaction before I look up the solubilities of the products. Let's see, let me change colors again here. 
So I'm going to rewrite, I'm going to rewrite it here so it's a little bit easier to follow. My dog scratching his chin. Oreo, are you going to scratch your chin off? Strontium sulfate and KBR. All right, so to balance this, let's see, I need to put a two in front of that to account for these two potassium. Um, metals are balanced. Now I'm going to go to polyatomics. You may want to review rules for balancing if you're rusty on them. I have one SO4 here, and I have one SO4 here. So the only thing left to balance are the bromines. And so let's see, I have two bromines here and this two coefficient I just put in. Okay, I'm all balanced. That was pretty easy. Now I need to look at the solubility table and I need to determine if strontium sulfate and potassium bromide are soluble. So that I, when I write my ionic equation, I know whether to split them up. So I uploaded a solubility table. So strontium sulfate and potassium bromide. Okay, so how do we determine that? Well, most of the soluble on the left side are listed according to the anion, so I gotta find sulfates in here. All right, sulfates are usually soluble there are some exceptions though. What are the exceptions? Calcium, oop, there's strontium. The fact that strontium is an ex exception means that strontium sulfate is not soluble. So I'm gonna put an S there, that means solid. It's not an aqueous form. Now KBR, uh, hopefully you'll get used to recognizing those quickly. Any ionic compound that has a group one metal as the cation is automatically soluble, no exceptions. So KBR is soluble. Alrighty, so I rewrote what we have so far. This is the molecular equation, the balanced molecular equation. And the reaction does take place. This is, is a precipitation reaction that takes place because at least one of our products is a precipitate, insoluble. And so now I'm gonna write the total ionic equation and the net ionic equation. To write the total ionic equation, you need to know the solubility of all the reactants and products. Anything that is soluble, in other words, that has the aqueous by it, gets split apart into its individual ions. Anything that is insoluble stays intact together as a like whole molecule. Um, now this is not an acid-base reaction, but just to kind of remind you, if it's an acid-base reaction, what you're looking for to split apart is strong acids and bases split apart into the ions, and weak acids and bases are kept, are shown whole, intact as a whole molecule. So I'm going to split up now everything. Now when you do split up into ions, you have got to show charges. And ions are automatically salivated AQ if you're asked to um, show the state of matter. Now when you split into ions, subscripts become coefficients. Okay, this is telling you there are two bromine anions. and two potassium. Keep polyatomic ions as a unit, okay? They don't, they don't split apart into atoms. It stays as a polyatomic unit. All right, so those are all the reactants. Now I'm gonna split apart all of the products I can. Strontium sulfate stays intact. It is not soluble so it doesn't dissociate into ions. And then this coefficient of two applies to both 
atoms in the ionic compound. So I have two potassium and two bromide. Alrighty, so that is your total ionic equation. To get to the net ionic, we cross out what is the same on both sides of the arrow, and they have to be identically the same. Okay, so let's see, what can I cross out? There are two bromides on both sides, and there are two potassium on both sides. And that's it, that's the only thing that match exactly. So when I rewrite what was not crossed out, I get the net ionic equation. And when you practice enough of these, you will start to notice that most of the time, not all of the time, but most of the time, the net ionic equation simply shows formation of the precipitate in a precipitation reaction. And that is it. Hopefully this is somewhat helpful. It's more important to practice on your own though.